I had no plans to make a video on this, uh, but it's simply something that I just can't ignore. So I am a big Hellboy fan. Like most people, my initial introduction was the Guillermo del Toro movie and eventually its sequel. I think that those movies are just terrific gateway horror films. Like they're not too scary for kids, but they're not too grisly and dark either. They're just that right amount. And I'm certain that those movies have a lot to do with just my love of the horror genre. Like they really helped get me into it. And they also helped introduce me to the amazing Hellboy indie comics. Those Mike Mignola Hellboy comics are like some of my favorite things ever written, ever illustrated. They're just beautiful works of art. And of course, as a big fan of both the Del Toro movies and Mike Mignola's books, I was not at all a fan of the 2019 reboot. A movie that to me felt like it was trying really hard to earn its R rating, which was ridiculous to me because I don't see why a Hellboy movie had to be rated R. It got to the point where it just didn't feel like Hellboy anymore. It was just completely its own thing. No, granted, there was some fun to be had with that movie. I do remember quite a few scenes that I did really enjoy. Unfortunately, the overall film is just a huge mess. It's nothing I really need to bother with watching again. So with that said, as of recently, I've been hearing about another attempt to reboot Hellboy, which is something that feels too soon. Granted, in this day and age of comic book adaptations, you know, it was bound to happen eventually. So supposedly Millennium Media, who currently owns the rights to Hellboy, bought it back in 2018. To me, this reboot really just feels like their attempt at maintaining the rights to it. So anyway, first thing in the morning, I wake up, take a shower, eat breakfast, get in my car, drive to work, sit down at my computer, open up Twitter because that's my life. And I am assaulted with this image. Ah yes, the off-brand discount version of Hellboy. So I saw somebody compare this to the Hellboy from Disaster Movie, which is f***ing hilarious to me, but also very true. This makeup to me just looked really lazy, like it was too little. But to be fair, that might be an improvement over David Harbour's makeup in the 2019 movie, which was just too much. It's bizarre because you got Ron Perlman's makeup, which is like this perfect balance of the two, and then you have one that's like way too much makeup and one that's like not enough. But I will say in defense of the guy playing Hellboy, um, Jack Kessie, I believe his name is, I haven't seen him perform. So for all I know, he could be a good actor. He could be great for the role. I can't see anyone being as good as Ron Perlman, but you know, sometimes you just have to let it go and give other actors a chance. And soon after I saw that image, they had posted the teaser trailer for the movie. And unfortunately, the trailer I saw looked like exactly the kind of cheap trash I was expecting it to be. To me, this looks like a direct-to-video or I guess in this day and age, straight-to-streaming sort of movie. A Redbox exclusive, if you please. Although I think I read something about Redbox going bankrupt like a few days ago. Now Hellboy the Crooked Man, as it's called, is actually based on sort of a standalone story uh, that occurs in the Hellboy universe. The comics are always doing this. Um, Hellboy has kind of an ongoing story up until Hellboy in Hell, but there's so many spin-off comics that just kind of tell their own individual stories. As far as the lengths that this movie will borrow elements from that comic, I don't know. I, I can't say for sure until I've seen it. The film is being directed by Brian Taylor, who you may know as one of the guys who directed both the Crank movies, which I have never seen. I always hear that those movies are like absolutely absurd and I want to see them. I just haven't got around to it yet. But Brian Taylor is also no stranger to comic book adaptations as he was also the co-director of Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Ooh. Okay, so on a more positive note, uh, he also directed a lot of episodes of the show Happy, which was kind of an underappreciated sci-fi show that I really liked. It only lasted like two seasons. But it's bizarre because I'm more familiar with his sort of fast-paced uh, action directing. And it seems like with this Hellboy movie, they're going more of a kind of 
slow burn folk horror vibe. So I'm really curious as to how his directing style will apply to something like this. Fortunately, one of the positives of this movie is that the screenplay was actually written by Mike Mignola, along with Christopher Golden, who to my knowledge is kind of a horror and fantasy writer for uh, teens and young adults. Never read any of his books, so don't ask. And I think on that note, you know, this movie could surprise us, you know, it could have a really good, very interesting story. It's important to note that looks aren't everything. I have seen a lot of cheap looking horror movies that absolutely kicked ass. And I just wanted to point out, because people might bring this up, yes there was a whole AI controversy over this film. What happened is there was an MPA article in which the president of Millennium Media stated that he used AI for one of their movies, and the article said that he used it for Hellboy and the Crooked Man, which according to the director Brian Taylor, uh, they were actually talking about another movie, and it was just this whole confusing thing that happened. As to whether or not that's true, and he's just trying to cover up his tracks, I don't know. Um, I guess I just have to wait and see the movie. I heard the movie uses like barely any CGI, so with that said, probably true that there isn't really much AI going on there, but um, I don't want to assume just yet. But I think it's very easy to look at a film like this and just write it off as cheap trash. But I would like to focus on the positives here because there's a couple of things about this that I think could make it a good movie. For one, I always thought that Hellboy would work best as a series, like uh, kind of an ongoing supernatural uh, detective type series. Think X-Files because that's basically what BPRD is. And I would definitely prefer a TV show adaptation of Hellboy to be animated because I do believe Mike Mignola's art is just essential to the look and feel of Hellboy. And I think that this movie is kind of giving off those vibes of a show. It definitely looks like a show. But I think focusing on these sort of mini Hellboy adventures instead of this big we have to save the world story uh, could be a step in the right direction. It could be a lot of fun. This also looks significantly less goofy than the 2019 movie, which that tone was just off. Like, that's not Hellboy. This movie is still rated R, but I think because it's going more for a kind of traditional uh, horror vibe and not just doing extreme gore shock horror, um, I'm more okay with it. You know, assuming that that is how the movie turns out. With Nola involved, there's that hope inside of me that this will be much closer to the comics. Even if it ends up not good, at least it'll feel like it was an earnest attempt. I'm hoping this is good, and I want to be cautiously optimistic. Uh, unfortunately, right now I feel very cautiously pessimistic. But please, feel free to prove me wrong, movie. I never want movies to suck. Like, some people do. Some people live for that, but not me. I want movies to be good. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.